a, the, uh, the DOE, Department of Energy, says you could have 200,000 megawatts by 2030. I think you can have 200,000 megawatts by 2010. But what does 200,000 megawatts, how does it compare to the overall scheme of things? We have 987,000 megawatts now. So it would be a 20% increase. But you could do as much wind energy as you want here. This is an unbelievable asset for this country. Renewable, green, jobs, everything. And it's in the right place. The only thing you need from the government on this, I think, is that you, got, you have to have the corridors that go east and west out of here. To carry the electricity that's been generated out? Yes. And, you, and you, you'll need the... What kind of investment would that be for the government? Oh, the, I don't see the government picking up the cost of that. I think that, uh, that whoever generates the power, if they have the corridors, they can, they can uh, transport it east and west. So you're just talking about laying out the land? Yeah, they, they've got to they've give you access so you can move it. Okay, and here second, you have a beautiful uh, second corridor, which is like this, which is solar. Wind here. This, this has some wind too, but not as good as the central part. So here you've got fabulous assets. And the reason they haven't been developed is because we haven't been pressed to do it. And so we're, what we have is we've gone through 40 years of continuing to import more and more and more foreign oil. And now it's going to get expensive, and it will, it's expensive now. It's going to get really expensive. Okay, now I want to go back and finish this uh, for you, but we've seen the wind corridor. Mm -hmm. We've seen the solar corridor. We're ready to go. How are we going to go? Now, go back to the power generation pie and the 22%, which is natural gas. I want Put that back up. Now I'm going to go to work on the 700 billion. So the wind can do 22% power generation. Mm -hmm. So if I take the wind to here and take this out and to transportation fuel, it works. There are 8 million vehicles in the world today on natural gas. So the technology is there. General Motors does 19 cars. They build them, 19 cars on natural gas. All of them are foreign. Really? None in the United States. So, and well, probably because there aren't natural gas stations where people can fill up their cars. The the, the natural gas has not been promoted. Right. Okay, not General Motors' fault. It's just that it, that it hasn't been pushed. Okay, if we move this 22 percent out here, this will reduce. Kind of a weak aid, isn't it? It's a 38 percent? 38 percent is what this number is. Okay. 38 percent of the energy needed to fuel vehicles in the United States? We can reduce this number, 700 billion, by 38 percent. You're redoing the 38. You didn't like it? I didn't like it. <laughs> I'm a better printer than that. Oh, right. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, 38 percent. So if we take, we reduce this by 38 percent here, It'll be about $300 billion. Off the top. OK. That's a start, a good start. Nobody else has a 38% number that I've ever seen. And you think you can do this by the year 2010? Uh, 2010? No, I can't do it by 2010. I can, I can get uh, pretty far down the, uh, the path within five years. OK. So, but by in 10 years. In 10 years. We've got it in 10 years, OK? And that's the story. It's, it's a pretty simple story, I think. All right, well, I, I, I want to get more about what you've been hearing from the political leaders and the business leaders you've been talking about this. And we want to ask you a lot of other questions about what it means, what it would actually take to get there. Will you stick around? And we'll go back to the desk and we'll talk okay. more about this. Good. All right, Boone's going to be sticking around, Joe. We're going to be talking an awful lot about this. And I know you've got some comments and questions, too. And we're going to get to all that when we come back. But we're going to get some questions. We awesome. are. They're, they're coming in now. We've got to go walk Good back deal. and take a look at them. Great. Joe? I want to see some of these cars. I want to, I want to know about... Um, you know, acceleration and whether, I mean, it's not putt, 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 right, Boone? I mean, they run, right? Joe, I mean, Joe likes that 
speed, well, doesn't well, he? No, it doesn't have to be speed. I want to be able to get where I'm going. And what's a gas station look like? Uh, does it look the same, natural gas gas stations? It does. You, does it really? It, we've got to build a lot of them, Boone. That, that would be one of the things we got to. There's a lot of infrastructure we're talking about here. Of course, a lot well, of we, jobs. We've, we've, job. we've got a lot to talk about. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, if you have comments, uh, questions like mine about anything you just saw, uh, email us here at squawk at cnbc.com. The futures this morning. Uh all right, Boone Pickens uh, answers your email questions now about all things energy. Uh, all things energy. Boone is the CEO of BP Capital. One thing, that, uh, Boone, you wanted to add: if we were to to cut 38 percent of our imports, um, the prices of, of of would not be 140 at that That's point. That's right. Would. No, it'll bring down the price of oil dramatically. How much? What would your guess be? I don't know. Tell me what the Chinese are going to use. Right. I mean, that, that's the question. And they might, they might uh, take the lead, or at least see our lead in natural well, gas. Well, see, we're down a million barrels a day this yeah. year. In the last 12 months, we're down a million barrels a day. And demand destruction in oil? Yes, yeah. because Who are the, of the price. And the Chinese pick it up. Who are the sacred cows here that, that aren't going to want this to happen? Can you pinpoint any of them? I, you it's know, hard to find them, right? I mean, the oil companies would be involved in this, right? They're not. Uh, well, sure. I mean, it, it, they're gonna, they someone's going to build the gas. filling stations. They got now. They're the ones that produce the natural gas. That's right. So whose feet are, or would you step on here? Uh, only the bad guys. Well, the guys can, in the, mid, see, the, the guys can, in the Middle East would be unhappy. Yeah, for sure. So those are the only guys. But, I'd hate for them to be unhappy. Oh though. yeah, I would too. I, I, it just break my heart ben, if, if they wanted to. You mentioned in the past though the ethanol that has a, a real strong lock hold. You, you talked about this with Bob Dole. What, what did he say about ethanol? Bob Dole, that was 1996, and I was uh, Texas chairman for Bob Dole, and uh, for you know he was he was in a race against Bill Clinton in uh, 96, and uh, he said you I want you to be chairman in Texas, and I said okay, but I get to be energy guy too, and he told me he said okay, and uh, so we had uh, we were a month or two into the campaign. And I said, when do I get to talk about energy? And he said, well, talk about it right now. And so I talked for an hour, and I said, all these things are going to happen. And he said, when? And I said, well, sometime in the future. And he said, OK. He said, uh, I have heard everything you say. And he said, I think you know a lot about energy. But he said, I know a lot about politics, and I'm going to teach you something about politics. He said, you see that, see that sleeping dog down there? I said, no. He said, well, it's there. And he said, one thing you don't do in politics is kick a sleeping dog. And he said, energy's a sleeping dog. This was 96. And I said, well, there's not, being, there's not much being said about it. And he said, if there is, I'm going to call on you for help. And he said, but if Bill Clinton doesn't mention energy, I'm not going to mention energy, and neither one of us are going to kick the dog. You understand? I said, yeah. So we went through the entire campaign, and there was nothing uh, mentioned about energy. Hmm. Uh, totally different. When I got to Giuliani, and I thought I was his energy advisor. I don't think he, uh, I was, but uh, I got five minutes one time to talk about energy. But I told him, I said, let me tell you something, Rudy, that by November of 2008, this was last year, I said, by, by November 2008, I said, I can promise you energy will be a huge question and a huge problem for our country. And uh, he said, well, we'll see. Well, he's not around, so it doesn't make any difference. Well, he's not dead, but yeah, he's not uh, he's not in the political picture anymore no, uh, right. at this point, or at least in a that's right, definitely on the fringe. Said he'd still be the best guy. Anyway, let's get some uh, get to we got. We'll try and do uh, as many as we can. We have literally we probably have maybe over a thousand at this point that have already come in. Um, we'll just go in order. I guess what about the status of Mr. Pickens' investment in clean energy fuels? Uh, and what role he envisions a company playing in his strategy to lower oil prices? That's not from me. It's some other Joe. What do you think? Well, Clean Energy Fuels is a is a small company traded on the Nasdaq that I have a large interest in. I I don't this this is Clean Energy Fuels is not a part of what I'm doing. It's not going to solve all the problems. All right. No. The, from Daniel, is, is, if the problems export is exporting our wealth for energy, uh, what about coal and nuclear? Wind is wind, this guy says. You said you want to do everything. I, I, I know the answer to that, right? Yeah, the, uh, I, want to, I want to do everything. That's right. All, everything domestic is uh, in